In the last video, we saw what it meant for a matrix to be in echelon form. Um, so I'm now going to explain what it means for a matrix to be in reduced echelon form. And then I'll explain why this is exactly what we need for solving systems of simultaneous equations. So um, a matrix is in reduced echelon form if three things hold. First, it's in echelon form. Second, all the leading entries are equal to one. And third, there's a slightly more involved condition I'm going to call it condition star, um, which is um, in a column containing a leading entry. There are no other non-zero entries. So in other words, the columns containing leading entries from these two conditions here are going to look like this. They're going to have some zeros, one, one, and some more zeros. And that's all that's allowed. Okay, so let's go back to our six uh, matrices from the previous example and see which are in reduced echelon form. What about this first one? Well, it's in echelon form, so that's good. Its leading entries are one, 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 they're all one, that's good. But condition star fails, because for example in this second column, um, the leading entry is one, there's a zero, but there's also a two, so that's no good. So condition star fails. The second guy, it's in echelon form, the leading entry is 1, and in that column there are no other non-zero entries, there are no other entries, full stop. So that is in reduced echelon form. This third guy, again, it's in echelon form, the leading entries are 1s, so that's good, and in those columns there's only zeros other than the leading entry. So this is in reduced echelon form. This one is not in echelon in reduced echelon form because it's not even in echelon form, and the same goes for the the final example over here. And what about this one in the middle? Three zero one zero two zero 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 zero. It's in echelon form, but its leading entries are not one. It's three and two. So only these uh, two on the top row here are in reduced echelon form. Okay, I want to explain to you the uh, reason for this definition, like it looks a bit random. Um, so let's take uh, this matrix here, so this is 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 2, minus 1, um, and let's stick a augmentation like a, an extra row, extra column. Um, so that it becomes associated with a system of simultaneous equations, let's say uh, 5, 13 or something. Doesn't really matter. So what is this, the system of simultaneous equations that corresponds to this? Well, if our variables are w, x, y, z, we get w plus no x plus y plus z. So just w plus y plus z equals 5. And in the second row, it's x plus 2y minus z equals 13. 
Now this is two equations in four unknowns, four variables. So there's no way we can completely solve this system, as in we're not going to be able to say the solution is x equals something, y equals something, z equals, because there may be many solutions. Um, but what we can do is we can use the equations to express some of the variables which I'm going to call dependent variables in terms of the other variables. which I'm going to call free variables. Because these other variables, they can be whatever they want, and that will determine the values of the dependent variables. So what are we going to do? We're going to have w equals 5 minus y minus z from this first equation. And the second equation, we're going to have x equals 13 minus 2y plus z. So w and z are dependent variables and sorry w and x are dependent variables and y and z are free variables. Now why did I pick w and x to be the dependent ones? Couldn't I have used something else? Well, no I couldn't because y is in both of these equations. So if you use the first one to express y in terms of w and z, you know, you'd have to substitute those values of w and z into the second equation. You couldn't just use it as it is. Whereas w only appears in the first equation, so you can just use the first equation to get w and x only appears in the second equation so you can just use the second equation to get x and you don't need to the, the equations don't interact in any more in any way right you've you've already done a, all the simplification you needed and the reason this works is precisely condition star right this condition here so in a column containing a leading entry there are no other non-zero entries if we take our dependent variables to be the ones whose coefficients are the leading entries, so in this case w from this first leading entry and x from the second, then those variables are only going to appear in one equation at a time. That's what it means to have no other non-zero entries in the corresponding column. So this is saying uh, w only appears in equation 1 and x only appears in equation 2. That's because all the other entries in that column are 0. Let's do another example. Um, let's take the matrix um, 1, 2, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, Ooh, let's align them, 0, 0, 1, 8, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and let's put the bar here. Okay, what are the system, what are the three equations that correspond to this augmented matrix? It's uh, w plus 2x plus z equals 1, and y plus 8z equals 2, and the third one is just 0 equals 0, which is fine. Alright, that's automatically true, we can kind of ignore this, this final equation. Um... What are the dependent variables? Well, the leading entries are this one and this one, which are the coefficients of w and y. So w and y are going to be our dependent variables. And as I said, you can see w only appears in the top equation. 
y only appears in the second equation. It's also true that x only appears in the first equation, so we could use it to express x, but we're guaranteed that the w is going to um, only appear in the first one, so we're going to use that. So w is 1 minus 2x minus z, and uh, y equals 2 minus 8z. So x and z are free, uh, w and y are dependent. Let's just do a related example. I'm going to take the same matrix and I'm going to change the um, vector on the uh, the right of the bar. Oops. Okay, so I'm going to replace this uh, third entry zero with uh, three. Right, I can do that. That corresponds to some system of equations. What is the system of equations? Well, the first two equations are exactly the same. They're exactly the ones we had before, because the top two rows didn't change. The third equation becomes 0 equals 3, which isn't true. right? So you can write it down. It's an equation. It's just not a true equation. right? It just doesn't hold in I mean, it, it would hold if you were working in a field of characteristic 3, but you know, we're not. These are We're working the real numbers. This is an integer 3. It's not equal to 0. So what does this mean? It means there is no solution. Because even if you find w, x, y, and z satisfying the first two equations, which you surely can, it's not going to satisfy the third equation because the third equation isn't true. So there's no solution. So this seems a bit artificial, and maybe slightly worrying. Um, what we're going to see is, uh, if you take a system of equations which happens to reduce to this, all you're saying is that then that original system of equations has no solution. So let's just quickly recap what we've done. We've taken a system of simultaneous equations. wrote down an augmented matrix we performed row operations to put the, uh, the matrix part of this on the left hand side of the bar into reduced echelon form and from that we can read off if there are any solutions so do solutions exist? And that's going to be determined by the zero rows of the matrix. If the zero rows are all 0, 0, 0, 0, and then a zero on the right-hand side of the bar, that's fine. If they're 0, 0, 0, 0, and anything else, that's an indication there is no solution. And if so, so if the solutions do exist, uh, we can just write down the solution. In the way that we did in the other two examples with free variables and dependent variables. If there are no free variables, then there's exactly one solution. Okay, so we're gonna see in the next video some examples of this uh, from the beginning. Right, we're gonna start with the system of equations do some row operations and solve the equations.